So we talked quite a bit about the definitions of religion and what are the different building blocks of religion. So one of the, I don't think we touched on, we did a little bit with the afterlife, but in a sense, I don't know if you're familiar with the Ernest Becker work and all the philosophies around there about the fear of death and how the a fear of our own mortality, or awareness of our own mortality and its fear is, in case of Ernest Becker, uh, is a, a significant component in the psychology, in the way we humans develop our understanding of the world. So what are your thoughts in the context of religion or maybe in the context of your own mind about the role of death in life or fear of death in life? And are you afraid of death? <laughs> Diana, We cover before. everything in this <laughs> podcast. Every single topic is covered. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, I so happen to have benefited perhaps from living with an older brother who seemingly had no fear of death while growing up. And he did everything, okay? So he was, he climbed mountains. He was a rock climber. He jumped out of airplanes. Of course, he had to be a Green Beret and go into the special forces where that type of thing is a, a requirement, right? And so because of that, I did a lot of things outside of my comfort zone, and which probably I shouldn't have done. And hope, hope to goodness my kids don't do them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So do you, so I do I fear death? Um, I think about death a lot. Actually, um, you may not know this about me, but in my field, I was the head. I was the co-chair of the death panel. So <laughs> it's called the death panel. <laughs> no, it's like it's the uh, panel to think about death in religious studies. Um, and I was that for many years. So you've thought about it a bit. A bit. Let's see. I think that people are a little too confident, I think, about life in general, that they're going to kind of live all the time mm -hmm. and not die. I happen to, I mean, I hate to say it, I'm super positive and most people would consider me to be too happy almost, right? <laughs> and so it's odd then that I spend a lot of time thinking about death, but I wonder if there's a connection there. Yeah. I'm happy to be alive. Right? Yeah, that, that that's kind of what the thinking about death does is it makes you appreciate the days that you do have. Yeah, that's a it's a weird controversy. I I tend to believe that um, the fact that this life ends gives each day um, a significant amount of meaning. So I don't know. Uh, it seems like an important feature of life. It's not like a bug. It's it seems like a feature that it ends. But it's a strange feature because I wish it, like all the good stuff, you wish it wouldn't end. Well, you know what's interesting, Lex, and I do point this out to my students because we cover, in a lot of the basic studies courses I teach, we cover all religions or as many as we can, like the major religions. And so take Hinduism, for example. Um, now, this is an ancient religion, okay? So you and I are here talking about how we enjoy living and life and things like that. Well, the goal of Hinduism is basically never to get reincarnated again. It's basically to not live, okay? Yeah. And to get off samsara, which is the wheel of life and death. Yeah. So escape the whole Yeah, exactly. Thing. Can think of that. Conditions are so different that you and I and my students are happy to be alive. But they're back in the day, you know, thousands of years ago when they wrote when they actually didn't write it, they spoke the Vedas, which were the sacred traditions of India. They want it off. They didn't want to come back. Life was terrible. That's what uh, people don't have the adequate understanding of history, that for the majority of people, life is really hard, right? And you and I are, and your audience, among the lucky. Yeah. That we actually life, like life. We want to live. <laughs> most of the time. Yeah, most of the time.